play the game for free, but if you want bigger guns and bigger bullets and bigger things, you buy them on the store, uh, and it goes through Apple's IAP, uh, in-app purchases, and you go to your game. Well, let's look a little bit at history. Um, 2006 and up to 2008, uh, basically, like you know, they were the mobile games were there. They were like you know, bit pixely. Like you know, you you were not doing hardcore games, and Justin Bieber was happy. <laughs> so. So basically, people who were interested in making games and having a great experience were not looking at mobile as a platform. They always thought this is for smaller games, which uh, like did well for the, a particular select section. Uh, whereas people, you you always used to have your phone, plus you used to have your uh, PSP or your uh, or your handheld, whichever which was Nintendo DS for that matter. So you were playing games on your DS and you were making calls on your phones, but. You know, something changed in 2009 when Apple came out and said, okay, well, uh, 2008, 2009, they said, now we are allowing third-party applications to put out games. And having App Store come in and change that place was a big revolution for everybody, okay? Otherwise, people used to, there were, there were different methods of going about making a mobile game. So you would make a mobile game and you would put it out and you would have to sell it. Whereas now, what Apple did was they provided you a platform Plus, they provided you a place to sell, and they kind of regulated how games would be sold. So my presentation today, or this talk today, is about that thing. It's about what happened in the industry, how things uh, were long time ago, how they have changed, and how they will change in the future. And we are going to look at like the journey, and we're also going to look at how things are changing. Okay? So for a handheld company like us, in 2008, uh, and I'm talking uh, from, from Kryptonite's perspective, we, FX Labs, got bought over by Kryptonite in 2009. So we came into this at that point. So I'm going to talk from that perspective. 2008 and before, um, as you can see, you know, most of your revenue for handheld games was coming from either a PSP or a Nintendo. So at that point, People were always using their phones to make calls, whereas they were playing their games on their handhelds. But things started changing. As you can see, uh, this, is, this is data from Flurry. Flurry is a, a, a website which collects data from people. And what it says is that about 60% of people are now, uh, or the revenue of, like, you know, 60% of handle games is, is coming from, uh, from your uh, phones, which is your smartphones, right? So now, so it's an interesting decision for a company which is always believed in handheld games to make. It's like, okay, well, where is, do we actually, like, you know, what do we do? Do we stay here or do we move on to actually try to do something different? So essentially, well, the decision was made for us. When Glue Mobile bought us, they said, well, you're now making smartphone games. So we said, fine, we will take all the learning and the experience that we had for PSP and for Nintendo and we'll bring it to smartphones, which is bringing the hardcore games to your casual platform. But by the way, smart smartphones are not casual platforms. They are not smart, smartphones are not casual platforms. They are replacing uh, DS and, uh, and, and all the uh, other handhelds that are available out there. And I think all of you guys believe in that. That's why the move towards actually putting these games on, uh, on, on, uh, on the, your smartphones, yeah? So we look at that a little bit into what makes these phones uh, like you know not casual, and what are the things that are that are weighing against Apple, Android, and BlackBerry, and the other platforms that are available. So if I've got an idea, how do I go about it? Which platform do I pick, and what are my options? That's what we are going to look at today, right? So th this was basically our decision of why we said, well, this made sense. So let's move on and try to make it uh, in that section. Now, if you look at mobile phone ecosystem, what you're looking at is, in terms of iOS, is, um, you're looking at uh, your, sorry, from, in terms of operating systems, you've got iOS, Android, Win 7, BlackBerry, WebOS, and Symbian. They are, like, you know, you have so many options. So if I've got a game, and I'm saying, let's make a mobile game, I'm looking at so many operating systems. So I'm thinking, which one's the best one for me? How do I go about this? 
Not only that, you've got companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Nokia, everybody out there saying our platform is the best platform. Uh, and you've got hardware providers who say, well, NVIDIA is better than this and that and that, you know. So uh, basically, this is your ecosystem. This is where everything exists. Now, what you have to ask a question is, well, what is, what are my choices? Do I go iOS, Apple, and App Store, or do I go Android, uh, Nokia, uh, like, you know, wherever, NVIDIA, and then Google Play? What are my options? How do I go about it? Or do I do both? Which is what I asked you guys. It's like, well, how many people here for that? Okay? So let me ask you another question. How many people here put out games on App Store? Or worked on games that have been put out on App Store? Good. Google Play? Both. Yeah, so, so basically the traffic is going both ways. So now the question is, how, which one's a better one? How, what are the problems we face when we try to put on that? And where do you think we are going? Well, uh, what I see when we put out a game for mobile platform, or we want to consider a game for mobile platform, we are looking at the OS, we are looking at the development platforms that are there, and how quickly do you get the software update cycles from the hardware provider? So, so they are moving their hardware or their software up. And uh, device security, how secure is your game when you put it on a device? And you're also looking at how quickly they enable third-party applications. Some platforms, they're out there very powerful, but they don't have a very good way of putting third-party applications on there. Not as good as what? Android provides or Apple provides, it's difficult to put it on that. There is a cycle to sort of go about it. And what is each platform's business strategy? Because if, say, why is Apple so successful today? Well, because of its business policy. What is Android's business policy? We, we're, going to look at, we're going to look at these five or six points to see how each of the platform is making its progress. Yeah? So let's look at the smartphone market share a little bit. This is again from Gartner, so this is a, again very recent Q1 2012. Uh, interesting thing everybody thinks is that there's a lot of Apple phones out there, uh, or, or there are a lot of games for Apple phones, but not true. Uh, Android has made a big dent, meaning like everybody out here has probably got a Samsung phone which has got Android on it, right? Everybody loves it. Uh, there are also some people who are Apple fanatics and they, they love their iPhones and they want to play there. There are people who have both. Uh, they, they are people who actually like play games on this, make like, you know, use one of their as their business platforms. As, and as you can see, Symbian was very big at one particular point. Its share is dropping down. So is BlackBerry. BlackBerry is having some issues with its own internal management. So it's dropping down. So basically, we are game is between these two people, which is your Android and your Apple. So those are the two platforms that are doing really well and look like if the graph continues, they will continue to do well. And why are they doing well? The question we have to ask is why are they doing well? Which is what we look at when we go through our, our slides is these are the reasons why they are doing well. But you know, let's look at our history of how this is not the latest uh, uh, like, you know, slide, but it tells you how things developed. Um, Microsoft had its C platform all throughout, but it was more of a handheld device for PDAs and other things. So it was not an OS which was uh, geared towards games or like media or anything of that sort. It was more of a PDA. Uh, whereas when Google came out and started like producing, like, you know, started working on uh, Android and other things, they had, they had learned from the mistakes that Windows made, so they started targeting their devices toward uh, a different way of putting out things. And so, so is your iPhones. You know, when they came out, 